electricity has always been in the air and magnetic waves have. Each time there's a storm, the spark of the storm creates an electromagnetic wave which can travel outwards. But earlier on, there was no device, no receiver, no wireless set that could receive it. This was the beginning. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Good evening. We're very pleased to welcome to the council chamber here at Broadcasting House tonight, Professor Asa Briggs, who in this series of lectures will take us through the story of broadcasting. The seven ages of radio. Professor Briggs. Radio was not invented, it was discovered. In England, it was usually called wireless, although there's seldom any shortage of wires around. <laughs> the discoverers were mainly scientists. But the man who made the discovery of practical importance was a young Italian, Guglielmo Marconi. This is a transmitting set, the sort that Marconi would have used in 1894, 1895. It consists of a Morse key, because at this time uh, trans you couldn't transmit speech, you could only transmit sparks. So the Morse key causes a uh, closing of a contact, which then energizes a big coil, much like the coil you have in a motor car, which steps up the voltage enormously so that you get a big spark. The energy is then sent to the aerial and the aerial then transmits those electromagnetic waves across to the receiver that we have in the background there. Marconi had no idea that wireless would eventually lead to broadcasting. The messages he sent were all over short distances and they were all in the Morse code. He did seem to be a miracle worker, however, and the world was enthralled in 1901 when he succeeded in broadcasting a Morse signal from Poldhu in Cornwall to Signal Hill far away in Newfoundland. It was shortly after midday, on December the 12th, 1901, that I placed a single earphone to my ear and started listening. The chief question was whether wireless waves would be stopped by the curvature of the Earth. The first and final answer to that question came at 12.30, when I heard... In 1904, J.A. Fleming, later Sir Ambrose Fleming, patented his thermionic valve, which now made it possible to broadcast words and music. The first really big event, and it was an extremely significant event, was a broadcast by Dame Nellie Melba, the great Australian singer, on 15th of June, 1920. This must be the most famous microphone in the world. It was the very one that was used by Dame Nellie Melba, the opera singer, to make a broadcast in 1920 from Chelmsford, where the Marconi works were and where there was a small experimental transmitter. She reached Paris with the aid of amplification and of wireless, and it said that uh, a gramophone recording was made there on a very old-fashioned cylinder machine. Perhaps 
Marconi had not given birth to radio, but he was certainly the nurse, and he'd made the baby speak its first words, dot, dot, dot.